the record and the spine are in the machine together and the record is taken away from the spine and it's spun. And actually if you look at the disc here, there's a little warning about copyright protection on it, which I think in a way is a little bit funny because nobody was really ever supposed to read these things. You're not supposed to take them out. Then yeah, you have the discs. You can see the movies here. All different kinds of discs. I'm just saying that I use this movie here because I really probably wouldn't watch this movie. But if you actually open the discs, you, you have a chance of damaging them somewhat. Like for example, just probably having that out, maybe expose it to dust or something. Or if I touch that disc or dropped it, that's probably bad too. But these are Select Division video discs. You don't really see these much anymore. I think the first time I saw these, I thought that they were something like from a TV station. Like they would be given copies of movies to play and this is what they'd be on. But I ended up being wrong with that. These are actually just consumer products. And those are Select Division video discs, also known as CEDs. Okay, in front of you, you see my modified FM transmitter. Now some of you might be asking what I've done to it. Let me move it all into frame here. Now, you can see up here, this is the standard plug that it came with. Uh, by the way, this is a Dynex FM transmitter. It's a Best Buy's brand of transmitter. It comes with four stations starting at 88.1 megahertz, and then it goes up incrementally. And here there's power button, and this here is not volume, this is fine tuning. And then here's the plug. You can plug this into any jack that uses an eighth inch connector, like an iPod or any sort of MP3 player, cassette player, CD player. As you can see here, I soldered on some leads that go from it to the board. The reason I did this is because this was actually breaking off of the board just from handling it. And what I did here is I just temporarily put on some uh, Cat5 cable to connect it all up. I would not recommend doing this permanently. So you, as you can see, that's kind of the connections are out here in the open, and this doesn't always provide the best sound signal. It can get messed up and it just doesn't sound as clean as normally so I'm probably going to take get like an eighth inch jack from Radio Shack and then cut it here and then put that into the jack and that's what I'll do for that um, I also did a little bit extending the battery pack here and um, if you're going to do this I recommend that you watch out because there's like hot glue and this is plastic so soldering in here isn't always the friendly environment uh, it takes two triple A's and it runs for a fairly long amount of time, a couple hours at least. Now here you see that I've added on some wire here, these black wires which are used for an antenna. Now if you look closely you can see that there's these little metal pads up here, there's three of them. And if you want to add an antenna like I did you just have to solder one wire to one of the pads and then scratch away some of the PCB on the back and solder another wire there. That will give you ground and that makes this a dipole antenna because it has two poles. Now some of you may be asking first off how do you know what length to make the antenna wire? There's actually a fairly simple formula for this. Um, what you do is you take the speed of light and you divide it by what you're broadcasting on in Hertz so the speed of light is just a constant, you can look that up, and then you divide it by the number of hertz. For this I'm using 88.1 megahertz. So to convert from megahertz to hertz, I believe you multiply it by 10 to the 6th. So 88.1 times 10 to the 6th is the number of hertz. So speed of light divided by the number of hertz, and then you divide that number again by 4, and that will give you your length. Uh, for 88.1 megahertz, it is about 33 and a half inches, probably 33.488 inches, something like that. Uh, everything else is pretty similar. A lot of people have said that the antenna length doesn't really matter as long as it's around that length, somewhere between 33 and 34 inches. And um, if you're wondering how I chose that channel, you're trying to find the channel that has the least amount of static. There's only four that you can choose from and hopefully there's not that much in your area 
that could interfere with that. If you hear any kind of wisp from any other radio station, any sound at all interfering in the channel you want to use, don't use that channel. Now some of you also may be asking, is what this is legal? Uh, essentially you're making this a lot more powerful. Depending on where you are, this might violate some FCC regulations, but I think I'll take my chances on this one. It doesn't transmit that far. Um, when I tested this first, I had a antenna that I wasn't hooking up properly, and I got about, I think, 80 yards or so. And if you do the math with that, then that's uh, 240 feet. I bet with this antenna, it goes a little bit more. But I doubt that anyone's going to complain if you're doing it in that small of an environment. It's really not that big a deal. It's maybe the size of a football field in radius. So I think you'll be okay with that. So now I'm going to show you what you can do to set up your own portable radio station that you can take with you to any sort of event, a camping trip. I originally wanted to use this for a charity event, only I wasn't able to use it because the event was moved indoors. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So now you can see I have the radio station set up here. It's all based around this, which is my mixer that I've showed before. It has four channels. I could hook a microphone up into this, but I won't for this demonstration. Um, one word of advice, if you're going to use a microphone, do not put it in front of any of the speakers for your radio station coming out. That'll create feedback, which not only sounds horrible, but it's probably not very good for your audio equipment. Now, I have these two sliders here. These can control the volume coming in from my MP3 player. You have a left channel and a right channel. I'll be showing that in a second. Now I have my two channels here, left and right, coming out of my mixer. And I'm choosing to use this radio right here as something of a preamp. You really don't need to do this. Um, I don't have a cable that I would normally be using that can go from RCA and then have a female jack for a um, 1 8 inch so I can plug directly into my transmitter. Or what I could have done is I could also get one of these jacks and solder it directly onto the transmitter. But I haven't done this. I'll just be showing using this radio as a preamp. Now I have the RCA cables fed into the input of this radio. You might not have a radio that does this, but like I said, you can just go out and buy the cable. And then I have the transmitter going in here through the phone jack. So, say I had headphones, I would normally put them in that jack, but I'm just using the phone jack for the transmitter. Now here is my listening radio. This is what you're going to be able to hear everything out. It has you know, a little knob for tuning here, and that will help you get directly in to your channel because it doesn't have digital tuning. Now over here on my mixer I'm going to be using my mp3 player and playing a song here. Now you can see when I do this the song goes away and then I can do the volume now. Put left channel up high, no right channel, right channel, no left channel. So that's how you would be using it with an mp3 player. And using this, you could also mix in, you could talk over the music, you could have, you know, there's there's two jacks here on the back, so you could put in two MP3 players, total of four channels of sound, and uh, that's how you can do a mobile radio station. You could carry all this around with you. It's really not that big of a burden compared to having like a full-fledged radio station. You can temporarily set it up, you can temporarily dismantle it, it's really quite simple and that's the portable radio station. Alright, that's the end of the episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, comments, criticism, then you can contact me and I'll have information available for how you can do that. And uh, that's been the second episode of Obsolete. I hope to be making a third one soon. And uh, if you guys have any ideas, I'd like to hear them. I already have some stuff planned out, but I'm always open to new content. Alright, see you guys later.